What does the P stand for? Well, it stands for what you seek. So seek Thaddeus P. You'll be glad you did. has been rather unpredictable as of late, has it not? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Thaddeus P. I am sure that you have seen and heard my name a great deal lately, but now at last you have a face with which you can associate it. And if this is by chance your first time hearing of me, then may I just say, what up? Before we get into the real reason that we're all here, let's address the question that's no doubt burning a hole in everyone's mind. What does the P in my name really stand for? I've heard a lot of people complaining about it. They say things like, well, how can I trust a man if he only shares his initials? And some of the more vulgar ones have filled in the blank with, uh, with some words that I wouldn't dare repeat in front of a crowd of respectable men, women, and children such as you. But you know what I like to tell them that the P stands for? It stands for perseverance, for prosperity, for prestige. And you know what they say back? I don't know what any of that means. Okay then, the P stands for Pontius. Now that I've cleared up that mystery for you, tell me, if your parents named you Thaddeus Pontius I and excused it by saying it was the name of some obscure Roman general, as if that's even a decent excuse, would you go by your full name? Because for me, it's a mouthful. By the way, I studied ancient Rome extensively at Harvard, never came across a Thaddeus Pontius in the textbooks. <clears throat> You know, this debacle really brings me back to my childhood. Bullies were relentless back then, and these people are really no different. They like to tear others down, and the worst part is they don't even stop at the name. It's always something. They want me to release my diploma, or my birth certificate, the real one this time, or something equally ridiculous. You know, they've even asked me to take off the gloves. Well, fine. The gloves are coming off. What's next? Take off the hat? Well, hat's off to you. Take off your glasses? Oh, I kind of need those to see. Anyway, now that you've gotten to know me a little better, I think it's time we get down to business. You all sought me out because you, in some way, feel inadequate. Like something's missing. Like you're just not quite the person you'd like to be. I've been there many times before, and I can tell you from experience that this is a natural, necessary, really unavoidable part of life, no matter who you are. Human emotions go through highs and lows all the time. That's just the way it is. So I can't guarantee that I'll have enough time to fix your problems today, but I can assure you that this is a tremendous place to start. One thread I found in common among the suffering people of the world is the allowance of negative energy into their lives. My wife always tells me, stay away from negative energy, and she's right. I cannot stress that point enough. Stay away from it. Far too often do people spew pessimism under the guise of realism. They call it brutal honesty, but it's not. You need to recognize that attitude and avoid it at all costs. It is not conducive to a positive lifestyle. Because, you know, believe it or not, you can decide how you respond to your surroundings. You have a mind of your own and a filter. You have a choice. You have a choice. Realizing this simple fact is essential to all personal growth. But it's only the beginning. It sounds incredibly cliche, I know, but it's true. If you're going to seek happiness anywhere, you'd best seek it within yourself. A 2008 scientific study by Dr. Richard Davidson gives several pieces of advice to the affirmative. You should resolve to smile more often. Focus on the little moments in life that bring you joy. Don't ever feel guilty for being happy. Take time to take care of others and share your happiness with them. Exercise your mind and your body and show gratitude whenever you can. And most of all, try your hardest at it. Make it your priority, okay? No other accomplishments in life matter as much if you can't enjoy life itself. These are 100% verifiable facts, people. One of my all-time favorite quotes comes from New York Times bestselling author Marianne Williamson. She says, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. It's that we are powerful beyond all measure. Her words ring quite true for me and have inspired me on more occasions than one. To me, this quote signifies the near infinite influence humans have over their own circumstances. You can search for help from an outside source, or you can give up entirely and give in to despair, but 
Unless you're willing to look inside yourself, you won't ever find the answers you seek. And that's true. The sooner you accept the key to your success has been inside you all along, the sooner you'll succeed in life. You might ask why you need me at all if I'm telling you the answers were inside you from the start. Well, there are times when we all need leaders, and there are times when we all need to lead. I'm here to lead you into self-leadership, if that makes any sense at all to you. Teach you to be comfortable around yourself, and above all else, I hate to say it, but to love yourself. You still following me? Good. A friend of mine once said that no one is born with talent, but that everyone is born with potential. I want you to take that potential that's inside of you and forge that potential into a mighty weapon. And that's what my goal is. And they who shall not be named, as I call my naysayers, will forever lurk in the shadows and they will do everything in their power to make you believe that you have no potential at all. And that people like me who try to convince you otherwise are somehow the bad guy. To them I say, and I would advise you to learn this phrase as well, Judicia in culos ponite, which in Latin roughly translates to, put your opinions up your tailpipe. Roughly. To which they'll probably reply, I don't know what any of that means. The bottom line is, we are not the enemy, they are the enemy. Yes, you heard me correctly. They are the enemy. And I'll tell you why. It's because they'll have you believe that the P in my name stands for pain. They'll have you believe it stands for poison, for poorness, or for plainness. That it stands for perversion, for pentagrams, for propaganda, but it doesn't have to. We need to fight back. We can't let them win us over. And after all, when they spit their hatred at us, it's not our shortcomings they're talking about. It's their own shortcomings and their own insecurities they're talking about. So don't fall prey to their prejudice. Don't be persuaded by their politics. Because P doesn't stand for any of that. So what does the P stand for, you ask? <laughs> I just know I'm going to be quoted for this one. The P stands for whatever you damn well want it to. It's time to start asking yourself the big questions. Who have I been in the past? Who am I now? Who will I be if I keep living how I do? And most importantly, who do I want to be? Popular, punctual, pure, poetic, patient, protected, perfected, promoted, passionate, paraded. What does the P stand for? The P stands for what you seek. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you all again next week. Same time, same place. Have a good rest of your day.